Hey everyone. In any war where large armies are going to be fighting each other, your other commanders, your other generals, your other officers and headquarters divisions, they might be spread out over many, many miles. And you need to be able to communicate with them so that you can coordinate an attack or a retreat or a strategy. The last thing you want is the enemy reading your mail, deciphering your messages. So instead of risking a message getting caught by the enemy, what a lot of armies do, and they did in the Civil War, was they came up with types of codes and ciphers so that they could communicate and the enemy wouldn't know what they were saying. That's what we're going to look at today, our Civil War codes and ciphers. So what I'm going to try to show you today are two examples of Civil War codes or ciphers that were commonly used. So here's one, and this is called the cipher wheel. I'll show you a close-up in just a minute, but it's basically two discs connected by a pin in the middle, and they each have the alphabet on the outsides of the discs, and you can line up different letters with each other, and this would be one way to send messages. Another way is something called a vinear square, and it's just a series of the alphabet repeated over and over, but shifted over one letter at a time. What these have in common is that they're both relying on just different alphabetic codes. And I'm gonna demonstrate how these would work and then I'm gonna give you a chance to try them out as well. So here's one type of code or cipher that would have been used in the time of the Civil War. It was pretty common. It's just called the cipher wheel or it's sometimes called the Caesar cipher because uh, it's claimed that Julius Caesar invented it or it's sometimes called the shift cipher because of how far you shift over the letters. So what you can see is it's really just two discs and each one has the alphabet on the outside of the disc. So there's an outer disc and an inner disc and there's a pin in the middle and it can, obviously you can spin that inner disc to line up with any letter you want on the outer disc. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you start with, on the outside disc, you're gonna start with the A facing up, and you can start with the A lined up in the inner disc as well. And then what you need to know is how far are you going to shift over, or what your letter is that you have to line up with that A in the outside disc. So let's say that we are doing shift nine. So that means you're moving the inner disc nine spaces to line up with that capital A. So the ninth letter of the alphabet is the letter J, so you have to make sure that the A is lined up with the J. That's the ninth letter. And you have to also make sure that all your other letters are pretty well lined up. A lot of them aren't gonna line up exactly, but they're gonna be pretty close, enough for you to take a good guess. And so now the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna tell you the code that you're gonna have to decrypt using the cipher wheel. Okay, so now we've got our cipher wheel lined up and we are ready to begin. And what you need to remember is you put the coded message on the inside using the inside disk and you'll get the actual message on the outside, okay? So code is input into the inner circle when the message comes out in the outer circle. So here is our coded message and it's pretty long. So I'm gonna kinda show you how this would go. So I've got everything lined up correctly. The first letter that I'm gonna look for, I'm given a Y in the code. So I'm gonna find the Y in the inner circle and see what it lines up with. And I see that it starts with P. So Y is P, and I'm gonna scratch out that Y so I don't use it again. The next one I'm looking for is the A on the inner circle, and that lines up with R. Scratch off the A. Then I'm gonna try to find the N. There's the N and the actual letter is E. So I've got P-R-E. Next I'm looking for B in the inner circle. That lines up with S. Next I'm gonna find the letter R in the inner circle. There's the R, it lines up with an I. And then I'm gonna find the M. M lines up with D. And then I'm gonna find the N, that's the next letter in the code, that lines up with E. 
Next in the code is W, and that lines up with the letter N on the outside wheel. And then the letter C, here C, it lines up with the T. So now I've got a word. I've got the word president, and so I know that I've got the code right. I just have to keep inputting all these letters, and we're going to find out what our coded message is. So I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and show you what this message would be. All right, so I've skipped ahead just to save a little bit of time, and I've input the entire code into the cipher wheel, and this is the coded message that I have received. Now, the one thing about this is there's no spaces. So you're not gonna know exactly where the spaces are, but you'd figure out pretty well, pretty quickly where the words are. And of course, our word, our message is president arriving at 2 p.m. to speak to troops. That's obviously something you would want hidden from the enemy, so you definitely wanna put that in a code. Now let's try one. I'm gonna give you a different letter to shift to. We're gonna do shift 20, which means that we're gonna line up the T with the outside A, and I'm gonna give you a new coded message to try to decipher. Okay, here's one I'm gonna see if you wanna try on your own. Now we're in the shift 20 position, which means I've got the T on the inner circle lined up with the A in the outer circle, and I'm going to put the coded message on the screen right now. Make sure that your inside T is lined up with the outside A. This is a good time to pause the video with the code up on the screen, give this a try, and see if you come up with the correct message. So go ahead and pause and see if you can work it out. All right, let's see how you did. If you did it correctly, the message you should have gotten was, hold your ground, no retreat. And that's how the cipher wheel is used, sometimes called the shift cipher, the cipher wheel, or the Caesar cipher. And this would have been a relatively common way to send codes during the Civil War. So the cipher wheel or the Caesar cipher is great because it's a simple way to send coded messages. The problem is that it's a simple way to send coded messages and it wasn't that difficult for the enemy to break the code. So if armies wanted to use something a little bit more complex, they would go beyond this and they might use something like this. And this was invented by the French and it's called the Vineyard Square. And this one has really three parts to it. And again, you can see it's just the alphabet repeated over and over and over. And every time it shifted over one. So here it's A through Z. And the next time it starts with B through Z and then A at the end and so on. So it shifts over one time. Here's what you need to know. For this one, you need a keyword. Then you need your code. And then you're going to try to find the message. So one thing that you need to know is up here at the top, this alphabet, this is where you're going to put in your keyword. And so for whatever day or whatever time it was, you had to know what word to input in that top line. And you would simply input that word over and over and over until you ran out of coded letters. The main box here, the main square, this is where you are going to go down and find the coded letter. And then over on the far left, this alphabetic column, this is where you're gonna get your actual message. Okay, so that's how it works. You put the keyword in here, each letter one at a time. You go down until you find the letter in the code and you shift over to, to the left to find the actual letter in the message. So I'll demonstrate that for you right now. All right, let's give this a try. So. The key word that we're going to use in this code is the word lemon, L-E-M-O-N. And you're going to go through each of those five letters, and then you're going to repeat back to the beginning of those five letters until you run out of coded messages. So here's how it would go. So the first letter in the word lemon is L. So up in the top, I'm going to go to the L column for lemon. Then the first letter in my code is also the letter L. So I'm going to go down until I find an L. So I'm in the L column. The first letter I find is an L, and that's gonna line up with the letter A. So the first letter in the message is the letter A. Then I'm gonna go to the E, because the second letter in lemon is E, and my next coded letter is X. So I'm going down the E column. 
until I find an X, there it is, and I'm going over to the message column and I get the letter T. All right, so I've got AT. Now I'm gonna go to the letter M, that's the third letter in the word lemon, and my third letter in the code is F. So I go down the M column until I get to an F, there it is. I go over to the message column and it's also a T. So now I've got A-T-T. -T. Next I go to the O in lemon and my next coded letter is also an O. So there's the O column, there's the O. It's in the first message column. So the fourth letter is A. Then I go to the N. Okay, the last letter in the word lemon. So I'm in the N column, and my fifth coded letter is P. I go down until I find a P. There it is. I go over to see what that is. The next letter in the message is C. Well, now I'm out of letters in the word lemon, so I have to start over. So I go back to the L. So now I go back to L. The next letter in the code is V. So I go down until I find a V. I shift over to the message column and I've got a K. So now I've got a complete word. I've got the word attack. So I know I'm being given an order to attack here. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of this message and then we'll see what we got. Okay, so using the keyword lemon, I've gone through the entire coded message I was given and I, again, there's no space in the vineyard square, just like in the cipher wheel, but you can kind of figure out where the words are. And so the order that I was given was attack at dawn. So that's my message, attack at dawn. So I'm gonna put one up and I'm gonna see if you can try this on your own. I'm gonna give you a new keyword and a new code. All right, I wanna see if you can try this one on your own. So I'm gonna give you a new keyword and the new keyword is the word sword, S-W-O-R-D. And so you're gonna keep inputting the word sword over and over in that top line until you run out of code, okay? So you're gonna to go to the S column and you're gonna to go to the letter V and that's gonna give you the first word in your message. And then you're gonna to go to the W column and you're gonna find the letter A and that's gonna give you the second letter. And you're gonna keep going until you have completed the message using the Vineyard Square. So go ahead and pause the video and then I will reveal the answer in just a moment. All right, so if you did this correctly and you use the keyword sword and you kept inputting that in the top line and you took your code word and you went down each column until you found each letter in the code word, the message you should have gotten was destroy the bridge. So this is the Vineyard Square and this is another common code or cipher that was used in the American Civil War. So of course, in modern times, militaries and spy agencies around the world still use codes and coded messages and ciphers. And although they might be more complex and more complicated than in the past, the idea of sending coded messages goes back to the Civil War, back to the American Revolution, and much, much further back to the days of Julius Caesar and even beyond. So I hope today that you learned a little something and that I hope that you give some of these a try. And until next time, be well, take care.